Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stapan Gao, and I'm a second year PhD student uh, with doc, uh, Professor Robert Watson. And today I'd like to talk about uh, my research uh, on library based software compartmentalization for Cherry. <laughs> okay, I think this is a, ah, all right. So first of all, uh, briefly, what is Cherry? Uh, it stands for Capability Hardware Enhanced Risk Instructions, and it extends existing ISAs with a new hardware representation for pointers, uh, which are also known as capabilities. As you can see in the diagram here, you have C pointer to a struct structure. Uh, now, under a conventional ISA, it would just be a 64-bit integer address pointing to somewhere in the memory. Uh, under Cherry, however, uh, you also have uh, additional information contained in the pointer, such as the lower bound and upper bound uh, within which the pointer can be dereferenced. Uh, the pointer also contains permission bits, uh, such as load, store, and execute, uh, dictating what you can do with this particular pointer. Now, what is uh, the implication of Cherry? Uh, first, uh, capabilities are unforgeable, which means that they cannot be created out of thin air. It has to be uh, received from some other sources. Uh, and secondly, capabilities are monotonic, meaning that uh, you can only derive a capability from uh, an old capability uh, only if the new capability is less privileged. So you cannot increase your privilege uh, by having uh, expanding the capability uh, to a larger bound, for example. So the implication is that arbitrary memory access is no longer possible. You have to have the capability to this memory region to be able to access it. Now let's talk about the need for compartmentalization. And I'm going to illustrate this through an example. So cons uh, consider this uh, untrusted function called a decode image. Uh, maybe we, our application uh, imports a third party library that uh, helps us decode images. And uh, we do not trust this library, but we want to use this function. So uh, we want this function. Uh, this function is supposed to not have any side effects. It is supposed to just return an integer and, uh, and return. So uh, how do we guarantee that in Cherry? Uh, I guess someone would say we can just pass the function of read-only capability to this uh, buffer, right? Uh, because the function will then only be able to read from this buffer and do nothing else. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the case because the C implementation implicitly confers many more powerful capabilities to this decode image function. Uh, for example, it will be able to read and write from the stack through the stack pointer. Uh, it will be able to access the return address pointer program counter, uh, lots of callee saved registers, and it may potentially call other functions, including system calls as well. So uh, it, it might be able to read and write from the file system as a result. Uh, this is definitely not safe. Uh, now, compartmentalization can solve this problem uh, by ensuring that untrusted code gains only capabilities that the programmer intends to give. Uh, this leads us to two questions. First one is how to demarcate the boundaries between different uh, trust domains. Uh, and the second one is how to control the privileges that are granted to each trust domain. Let's answer the first question, how to demarcate the boundaries between trust domains. And uh, our hypothesis is that the trust uh, boundaries align well with uh, dynamic library boundaries. Uh, this is because in modern software, uh, often links with multiple dynamic libraries that are potentially provided by third-party vendors. And each of these libraries typically serves a narrow set of purposes, such as uh, image decoding and uh, HTML parsing or cryptography and so on. So these libraries likely require a similarly narrow set of privileges. So um, we set the boundaries of trust along the uh, dynamic libraries and this seems to be a very natural way of uh, compartmentalizing them. Now, moving on to the second question, how do we control the privileges granted to each trust domain? And our solution here is to use trampolines to transparently handle domain transitions. What do I mean by that? 
Uh, suppose that uh, you are in compartment A and you're calling a function in compartment B. Uh, normally the function call would just jump uh, from uh, this code in compartment A to compartment B. But uh, in our case, uh, this function call will be intercepted by a trampoline that will switch the execution stack uh, that uh, the function uses to uh, store its local variables and uh, temporary variables. So this makes uh, this ensures that the callee and the caller cannot uh, corrupt each other's stack content. We also do other stuff uh, such as uh, only allowing trusted compartments to uh, register signal handlers. And also we prevent user code from accessing certain uh, runtime linker data structures that are privileged to prevent uh, them from uh, manipulating control flow and causing uh, vulnerabilities in that way. So these features are all implemented efficiently through the use of Cherry and also our Morello hardware features, uh, such as sealed capabilities and executive restricted mode. Now uh, I would like to share some preliminary performance numbers. Uh, uh, we are running LibPing's internal test suite on images of uh, various sizes. And as you can see on all, all of these performance indicators, the overhead uh, converges to about 1%, uh, which is very promising. But of course, this is just a preliminary uh, evaluation. Uh, this marks the end of my presentation. Uh, for more information, uh, you can check out cherrycpu.org or email me. Also, in the latest release of Cherry BSD, uh, the prototype of compartmentalized, uh, library based compartmentalization is included, and you can check the man page for that. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>